Hey there, I am Alex, aka Silvermont, and this is part 2 of our look at the Taken King's history. In the first part we learned of the Hive's early origins, the Osmium King's three daughters Orash, Sathona and Zero, how they managed to escape their fate and make a pact with the Worms, transforming themselves into Oryx, Savathun and Zivu Arath. In this part we will look at what came next and what led them to our system. It was, in a sense, a matter of clashing ideologies between the dark and light. The Traveller would seed civilizations with the notion that goodness can prevent suffering. Oryx and his sisters were now agents of the darkness, and spread across Fundament. Unfortunately for them, Tauix, the mastermind behind their father's death, escaped them. But it was around this time that they discovered the 53rd moon in orbit of Fundament, the Traveller. And it was their thinking that the Traveller must be the one who had planned the God Wave, an immense tidal wave caused by the alignment of Fundament's moons, wiping out all life therein. But the Newborn Hive was not unstoppable. As a matter of fact, they met with many defeats, ostensibly caused by Oryx himself, the king who clung to ideals such as peace and stability, cancers, words the Traveller used to bind its slaves. The Hive were being crushed by a race known as the Ammonites. They simply could not match them in direct combat, but if they could not defeat their strength, they would infect their weakness. The Worms taught Oryx their magics, and it was here that the concept of the Hive throne worlds began. Even if Oryx should die, as long as he was not defeated in his throne world, he would suffer no true death. The body might die, but the soul remains, content to wait its rebirth and Oryx was betrayed by Savathun, murdered, all for the crime of mercy. And beyond that, Oryx's worm had begun to slowly kill him within, for his refusal of his nature. So this death caused by Savathun served as a lesson. In time, with the worm's magic, the Ammonites were defeated, the Leviathan killed and the Traveller itself fled, Taurix along with it. And after this victory, the worms revealed much. They were not the darkness, they merely moved through it, and they revealed their disgust with the Traveller. Safety and peace were regressive traits. Only through suffering could sentient life be worthy of existence. To never advance, to be satisfied with what was, and never think about what could be. That was the Worm's disgust. From here they began to pursue both the Traveller and Tauix, Oryx, Savathun and Zivu Arath mastering the art of cutting through space. Remember how the Hive tomb ships arrive out of thin air and vanish also? That is what we are looking at here, their mastery over space itself. And now that each had established a throne world, the three children of the Osmium King waged war against each other for 20,000 years, all to practice the art of death. Following this they began their Dark Crusade, wiping out hundreds of planets. Oryx taking joy in removing these blights, but finding sorrow too in all that death the two eventually becoming one to him. But a problem remained. The worms. Oryx's worms' hunger grew faster than he could sate it. He could exterminate an entire world, but the worm would then hunger for two. Should he destroy two, that hunger would rise to four, and so on. Eventually, of course, the worm's hunger would be too great to satiate, and Oryx would be devoured. On top of this, the Hive met their match in the Acumene, a race that had found Tauix floating in space. And in Tauix they found the weakness of the Hive. If Oryx and his siblings were destroyed, the Hive would fall with them, cut off the head of the snake and all that. And Oryx was killed again and again by the Acumene, the siblings near giving in to despair. But Oryx had a plan, and Zivu Arath and Savathun sacrificed themselves for it. Oryx killed both of them in their throne worlds, and claimed their strength, and with this strength he paid a visit to the worm god Akka, and promptly cut it into pieces. And in this act, Oryx learned how to take. He carved these secrets into the Tablet of Ruin, and thus was born Oryx, the Taken King. 